Now, most of you guys probably don't know this, but in addition to being a music producer, I am a writer. I really enjoy writing. My favorite thing to write is short stories, and I had a few just kind of sitting around, and I really wanted to read you guys some of them because uh, I've been really enjoying talking with you guys, and I figured now would be a good time to introduce you guys to some of my writing. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, this is the first of many if you guys enjoy this. So uh, here we go. By the light of the moon. By the light of the moon, the world turned a sort of radiant, soft silver that warmed the whole night sky. The glassy reflection of the night sky on the lake was as stunning as it was delicate, for even the smallest movement in the water marred the mirror-like surface of the lake. When a duck touched down on the water, it created ripples that contorted and distorted the image of the night sky, causing elongated stars and an oblong moon, which, although beautiful, were quite a sight to behold. The dark silhouettes of the trees ringed the lake like sentinels surrounding and protecting the precious diamond-clear water. They stood tall and beautiful, adorned by crowns of moonlight. The trees climbed the mountains all around the lake, making the ground from a distance all but invisible day or night. What was I in the scheme of all of this? Could I call myself part of nature? Part of the midnight tapestry woven together by the common thread of the night sun? I looked down at my hands, at my chest, at my legs. I was soaked in the same moonlight as the trees, and the water, and the mountains all around me. I felt at peace. Summer days are beautiful, but summer nights are what you remember when you're old and gray like me, said a voice from behind me. I spun around to see who the seer who had seemingly seen into my mind was. It was an old man with eyes that mirrored the moon and long, scraggly silver hair. He leaned against a tree near where I was standing. In one hand, he was holding a cane, which was nothing more than a broken branch. And in the other, he was holding himself up against a tree near where I was standing, bracing himself. The old man stroked his beard, cleared his throat, and began to speak. Now, I'm just an old man, you see, but perhaps, if you'd like, I could tell you a story, a story about a summer night. We both went quiet for a minute, both admiring the night sky. I think the old man misinterpreted my silence as a no, because the old man turned to leave, saying, eh, that's all right, I'm just a crazy old guy anyways. And chuckling to himself, as he turned to walk away, I spun around and gently grabbed his shoulder and said, the first thing that came into my mind, sir. I do believe you owe me a story. And at this, his eyes brightened, and a sort of youth came to his face. The sad smile of rejection left his face as he began to speak. Well, it was a bright, moonlit night by the side of the lake that meets the Exide River. The moonlight shot through the trees, the light catching in the early night fog, creating shafts of light. I sat fixated on, seem on the seemingly unbreakable shafts of light. I watched lightning bugs, light the spaces between the shafts like stars fallen to earth all of a sudden the peace and the shafts of light were shattered by a girl jumping out from the darkness into the beam of light i was stunned and fell backwards off the log i was sitting on and yelped the girl slung a weapon from over her shoulder what was it a guitar she was m roughly my age and wore a beautiful crazed expression her blonde hair whipped around in the soft summer breeze and by the light of the moon i could swear she winked at me and then suddenly she began dancing wildly around my fallen, scared body, strumming away in an old folk song. What was the song? I, I don't remember, but I feel like I should. Then she began to sing, jumping and shouting, shouting the chorus, running through the walls of light like they were nothing. The lightning bugs flew away from her in a panic frenzy. And for one moment it seemed, it seemed like she was the only soul in the forest, like she was a forest spirit and this was her domain or something. Ah, that was a ridiculous idea. What do I say? But back to the story. Then suddenly with one final strum of the song, she yelled out the last beautiful line. And that was all. As I began to sit up to try to ask her a question, she disappeared into the forest. I wasn't sure if it was a dream or not for a while. I just kind of sat there wondering. Once I was on my feet, I saw something curious written on the ground. In footmarks. W what was it? L U N A? What could that be? L Luna? Who, who was that? Maybe I'd never know. Maybe. But I decided then and there that I'd spend the rest of my life in this forest to find out. 
Is that true? How long have you been here? Well, uh, I came here during the summer of 1973 and never left. Never, never left? Wow. Did you ever see her again? See her again? No. But every night, I smell her skin like the soft smell of pines and mountain flowers. Every night, I hear her voice in the wind as it warmly whips past my ears. And every warm summer night, my mind replays what I saw 40 years ago by the light of the moon. <laughs>